What up? It's your boy Jay Banks coming back with another video, and today we got that man. Baseball doesn't exist. Make sure y'all go subscribe to Baseball Doesn't Exist. It's super easy. All the cool kids are doing it. We got the 2024 MLB season is breaking, people. Let's just get into this video because I know what he's talking about. Out while getting hit in the face, the most controversial jerseys in sports history are literally breaking on the field. The players' union is revolting against MLB and the pitch clock because pitchers' arms are also breaking Facts. on the field. While well, this team is breaking their city's heart by literally moving to another city and according to some fans, demoting players just because they wore this wristband. What? Man. The biggest star in the league has already been That's crazy. gambling, lying and tricking a fan into giving him this ball, lying to the media to get the Dodgers to pay him the largest contract in North American sports history. I don't think he lied. Even breaking federal laws. The 2024 MLB season seems to be breaking. <laughs> yeah, but that's just Nothing that's just Josh Naylor. More broken than the Chicago White Sox. Bro, talk about it. Legitimately might be the worst team in baseball. Here. Bro, they and are so bad. I might not even react to a game this play, year. They were on pace to lose 140 games. The record Dang. of those losses is 134. Their last in batting average, last in on base percentage, last in slugging percentage, have scored the least amount of runs, had the least amount of homers, and have the least amount of hits. Last year, Thank the you for worst Wendy. qualified hitter in the league had an OPS of 582. The White Sox I didn't even know that happened. What the heck? Was this TA? Last year, the worst heck yeah, it was. In the had an OPS of 582. The White Sox, as a team, have an OPS of 592, meaning the White Sox lineup is essentially having nine of the worst hitters in the league. On, on the, the same team. team. On April 22nd, nearly a month ago, wow. the they had been shut out in 36 percent of the games they played that's eight of their first 22 games the first bro that's in baseball terrible history to do that after their first 25 games they had a negative 85 run differential. they're getting Nearly spanked runs worse than the second worst run differential it got so bad the reds came to chicago and scored 27 runs in one series meaning the reds scored more runs at the white sox stadium than the white sox themselves had scored there the oh. entire year then the impossible happened. The Rays came to town and they shocked them with a solid nine to four win. Yeah. The next day, the Rays punched back, taking a three nothing lead. The White Sox didn't quit and came right back. It yep. was tied going into extras. Six to the Rays six. They thought they had the White Sox beat after scoring a run. When but then my boy, them, Benny Bombs. Let's go! Put it on the board! The amazing comeback. Shy Town! Stand up! Balance the Rays again, completing a three game sweep. Say you're proud for all the haters. Unfortunately, after this, they're still on pace to have the worst record since the 1899 Cleveland Spiders. 1899? They averaged 199 fans per game. They were so bad, the league forced them to play their home games at away stadiums Heck because yeah. nobody came to see them play. And that's also what the league made the Padres do to start the 2024 season. They yeah, had to but face the most expensive team of all time, headlined by Shohei Otani, whose season really began in December 2023, when everyone was waiting to see where Shohei Otani was going to sign. On December 6th, a report surfaced that Otani was set to make his final decision within the next week. The internet went crazy and started digging. Two days later, on December 8th, Fans found a private flight going from Southern California to Toronto. Supposed oh. footage of Otani entering an air. Yep, that's Otani. That is old supposed footage, my boy. Don't even, don't even cap. That's Otani right there. Report with his agent and interpreter <laughs> spread on. Just two randoms. December eighth also just so happens to be Badai Day in Japan, a day that is recognized as a day of good luck. When he signed with the Angels in 2017, he did it 
on December 8th. Fans did more digging and found that Blue Kendrick Jays Lamar pitcher, type stuff. Yusei Kikuchi, who went to the same high school as Otani, had reserved an entire sushi restaurant in Toronto. Could this Jeez. be reserved for a celebration? The baseball world was anxiously waiting to see if this plane was actually Otani, and around 4 o'clock Eastern, baseball writer John Morosi confirmed through multiple sources that this was Otani on his way to Toronto. All hmm. signs pointed that this was a done deal. Yo, no way they got people stalking him from the Snapchat. Oh, no, nah, that's got, if this is real footage, this is low-key insane. This is low-key insane behavior just for him to not sign to your team. Otani was a Blue Jay. Then an hour later, it was discovered. What? Otani was still in Los Angeles. Whoever told John... See? You know what, uh, see, this is why you don't believe everything you see on the internet. Otani was going to Toronto may have made him a ton of money. Seeing all these reports online, the Dodgers felt like they had to make an offer that Otani couldn't refuse to prevent him from going to Toronto, and that's what they did. A day what? later, he signed a 10-year, $700 million Yo, contract. Yo, I didn't even know how that went down. So what if Otani went to the, the Blue Jays? People speculate that Otani's team leaked all this info themselves to add pressure on the Dodgers to offer Otani more money and in the process crush the dreams of Blue Jays fans. Yo, the Blue Jays have been on the, the receiving end of a lot of uh, beatdowns as of late. A few weeks later, they made Japanese pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto the highest paid pitcher in baseball history. With two of the biggest Asian stars on one team facing a team with Korean-born star Ha Sum Kim, MLB's opening series in Korea was mayhem. Fans dressed up as Otani, Yamamoto, and even Otani's dog to show Whoa, their support. Whoa, they actually look so like them, though. That there was even a bomb threat at the stadium before the game. Police decided it was safe to play anyway. A few hours later, things got even Yeah, better. nah, we reacted to this game. Yamamoto, Yamamoto got rocked, though. Get out of the first inning. Otani played well, but was shaken with <laughs> news that his interpreter had stolen $16 million from his bank account to pay off each What? What? Otani like that? had stolen $16 million from his his bank account. Imagine being flipped off by Otani, bro. I might cry. Friend, an interpreter was fired for this and soon after arrested. This controversy looked like it could be affecting Otani. He got off to the worst start of his career over the first eight games. Of the yeah, season, right. Okay, I wonder how that panned out. Yet. Against the Giants, that all changed. Otani hit his first ever homer as a Dodgers, caught by this lucky fan. Facts. Security quickly. Hey, shout out to Otani. Because now my boy Otani is now a hittist, y'all. He is now a hittist. Uh, he's been promoted. He's leading the, the majors and everything. That is unbelievable. He stormed her trying to get the ball. After the game, Otani said he was able to meet her and exchange some gifts to get the ball back. The fan quickly came out to say that wasn't the case. According to her and her husband, the Dodgers aggressively negotiated with her, pushing her to give up the ball in exchange for two signed hats, a signed bat, and a signed ball. No way. That's it? An Otani who just got a billion dollar contract, they're gonna give you a two sign hats, a sign ball, and sign bat. Now, listen, a sign hat, sign ball by Otani, and it doesn't look like it's signed to anybody. So that's like, that's good memorabilia. But come on, man, I gotta get lifetime tickets, bro. You could put me up in the nosebleeds. Just give me lifetime tickets. Just give me a, that's it, that's it. That's it. And it could be, it could be regular season only. Regular season only. That's crazy. In total, Insane. This is estimated to be worth around five grand. The Otani ball she caught was estimated to be worth over a hundred thousand dollars. She said the Dodgers said they wouldn't be able to authenticate it if she kept it, hurting its value tremendously, and told her meeting Otani would be impossible. Fans everywhere accused the Dodgers. Nah, I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> bro. We put. Fumblest, LAD, Dodgers Lady, Otani.
Homer. Fumblest of the year candidate right there. I don't care. Of ripping off and misleading That's the crazy. Fan and accused Otani of lying about meeting the fan. However, according to Japanese speakers, Otani was mistranslated and never actually said he met them. The Yo. Next day, he hit another homer. A week later, he made up with the fan, gave All him right. the autograph. <laughs> Still, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of it. But listen, lady. You gotta be asking more than that. Graphs ...and met them in real life. Facts. Because of his good karma, he continued hitting homers. He hit seven that's in what, the That's next what happened. Weeks. Do good. He went to Toronto and got booed by the fans who felt he deceived Toronto, them. Toronto, my boy Histo plays. Hit another homer. Stuck at DH, unable to pitch or play the field because of injury, it seemed impossible for Otani to ever win MVP. Yet somehow, as of today, he has the second highest war in the league. Yeah, but look who he's behind. He's behind my boy Mookie Betts. My favorite player in the MLB currently playing defense. But Tony has 2 points. I'll never forget the Red Sox for not for not trading him or not May signing him again. In history. The him. closest was Manny Ramirez. He had 2 war. If he keeps this up, Otani could be the first designated hitter in history to win an MVP. But not every player has had such a great start to their season. Eight days after opening Korea, the season kicked off in America, where the Cubs put on one of the worst pyrotechnic shows in the history of sports. Yo, then, that's so trash. The Mets already Shout losing, out Tank. We're not happy when Reese Hoskins made this slide. And oh Jeff yeah, McNeil Chase Utley was style. Very unhappy. He screamed at Hoskins and stuck a finger in his face. The two started chirping. McNeil called Hoskins the dirtiest player he's ever seen, and Hoskins. Hoskins just kept calling him a crybaby. The Mets argued that Hoskins has a history of dirty slides, referring hey, to Hey, remember, he was on the Phillies, yep. According to the rules, all of these seem completely legal. In the second day of the season, we already oh, had yeah. our first beat. And the very next day, Hoskins responded by hitting an RBI Ooh. single, another single, as well as a two-run bomb to rub it in the Mets' Ooh. face. Upset, the Mets responded by throwing a pitch behind his head. Yeah, you can't, hey, you lost. You lost the battle right there. Now, uh, if anything, hitting them is... Anything is just worse. That just means you can't get him out, so we're just gonna hit you. Hoskins that's that's what that is. Hoskins do get upset and a three-game suspension for the pitcher. The Mets got even more embarrassed as they went on to lose their first five games. However, oh yeah, the Mets was trash. They currently sit in third in the NL East behind the two juggernauts, the Phillies and the Braves. Well, the I mean, have been even more surprising. Projected to finish third, they have the best record in the NL Central, right ahead of the Cubs. A team that made some pretty big noise this offseason by reaching Telling you, those, that's the division winner right Scott there. Boris client Cody Bellinger. Unfortunately for them, he got injured yeah, but he got in hurt. April. Boris's other client, JD Martinez, also started the year injured. And three weeks into the season, after having an ERA over 11, Boris's most prized client, Blake Snell, also got injured. He got booed, this bro. Like bad. For Boris during a season that keeps and then don't forget for about Jordan Montgomery. Client. This injury trend has continued everywhere, and people can't figure out why. Yuri Perez, Rookie of the Year finalist last season, got injured and needs Tommy John. Shane Bieber, former Cy Young. We player, all know why, bro. We all know why. John. Spencer Strider, favorite to win the Cy Young this year, got injured and needs Tommy John. And all three of these injuries happened within 48 hours. In total, 92 pro players have gotten Tommy John in the past year alone. Some MLB's biggest stars, Jacob deGrom, Max Scherzer, and Garrett Cole. 92, bro. That's like one every three, to three or four days, bro. That's insane. In the past year, that's like one every two or three days. single pitch this season. If you take the 10 hardest throwing pitchers of 2023, eight of them have been on the injured list in April. The entire Dang. baseball world was scrambling to figure out why this yeah, problem man. is becoming so huge. Many people blame velocity. Unlike in the past, today's pitchers are taught to throw as hard as they can on every single pitch they throw in a game, which presumably adds mm. more stress on the arm. The number of major league pitches clocked at 100 miles per hour or faster has more than tripled in just three years batters in mlb 
hit 191 on fastballs 100 miles per hour or more. On fastballs 95 miles per hour or less, they hit 281, almost in a hundred yeah. point difference. Throwing harder with just hitters are getting too good, to man. Hit. There's no way pitchers are going to stop throwing hard, even if it does decrease their injury risk. But many people aren't blaming velocity. The Players Association is blaming the league and the pitch clock for the increase. Could in be. Injuries. It could be. Saying, it's a listen. I'm gonna be honest. It's like a combination of the two. Like if you're throwing that hard, that fast, and that rapid of the succession, like your arm's gonna get torn up and I'm, pun intended you he know what i'm saying the players who unanimously oppose the pitch clock their concern is that less time in between pitches means pitchers have less time to recover therefore get injured more and blamed mlb for not caring about players health mlb obviously disagrees <laughs> saying that there is no meaningful increase mlb in the not agreeing with the players of the pitch clock last season what a surprise this is true However, some think this is going to change as injuries in the minor leagues have exploded since they originally implemented the pitch clock in 2018. In reality, nobody knows for sure what's really to blame for these injuries. But out I mean, of all the might not be a coincidence. In a single game in 2022, 49% of them had to go on the injured list at some point. The injury epidemic has become a serious issue for MLB, yeah. but in some rare cases, injuries have actually saved players' careers. But before we get to that, a quick word Your from boy, today's Renault. sponsor. There's no better summer activity All right. than get them the paper feet. Ronald Blanco didn't start pitching until he was 18 years old. Most Jeez. players out of the Dominican Republic sign when they're 16 years old. He worked at a car wash until he was 22. That's when he finally signed a contract with the Astros for five thousand dollars bro that's Took him crazy seven years but he finally defined that's on, the odds that's on some jose altuve stuff up as a starter for the first time at 28 years old he made several starts but was quickly demoted however this spring he caught a massive break justin verlander and jose urquidy got injured meaning blanco <laughs> all of a sudden had a chance to make the starting rotation out of spring training. At 30 years old, he knew this could likely be his last opportunity. He dominated all the way up to his last outing where he was scheduled to pitch on the same day his wife was due to have their second child. <laughs> Even though this was just a spring That's training crazy. game, Blanco watched his daughter be born, then rushed to the stadium in order to make his start a few hours later. He then proceeded to strike out 10 batters in only four innings. The Astros were so impressed, they told him he made the opening day roster on the mound. Look at everybody, yo. That's sick, yo. Hey, look at my boy Bregman coming up. I know he in the cup, but that, yo, getting that to my Bregman, bro, that'd be tough. Game. JP3. This was his reaction. Altuve. Within a few hours of his daughter being born, he made his first opening day roster. And a week later, he made his first start. Blanco, who's never thrown a complete game in his entire professional career, proceeded to throw a no-hitter. He has been the Astros' best pitcher all year, and if it wasn't for Verlander mm, and Akini going down, Blanco wouldn't even be on the roster. The rest of the Astros, however, have been terrible. Their pitching staff is torched. Verlander, Urquidy, Framber Valdez, Christian Javier, and Luis Garcia have all spent time on the IL this year. Their veteran first baseman, Jose Abreu, is back in the minors because he started so bad. This is a team who's Witnessed. made it to the American League Championship seven years in a row. They started this season seven and 19. Only one team in Major League history has made the playoffs after starting 7 and 19 or worse, and that was in 1914. They entered the season. What did he say? In Major League history has made the playoffs after starting. Only one team in a row. They started this season 7 and 19. Only one team in Major League history has made the playoffs after starting 7 and 19 or worse, and that was in 1914. <sighs> I would have never have thought.
that the Astros is a one in I don't know how many number chance to make the postseason after going seven and nineteen. They're now twelve and twenty three at the time of this recording. Just lost to the Yankees last night. Wow. They entered the season with an 86% chance to make the playoffs. Now, they have a 44% chance to make the playoffs and are in last place. And yes, that means the Houston Astros have a worse record than the Oakland Athletics. A team that last year was on pace to have the worst run differential in baseball history. This time last year, they were last in the league in at least 12 categories, and their starting pitchers hadn't recorded a single win. The franchise has essentially been trying to lose games on purpose and move the team to Las Vegas for <laughs> several years. One of the only positives the team had last year was Estuary Ruiz, who led the American League with 67 steals. This season, he got off to a hot Hot start in the first series he had an OPS over yeah, he was 100 nice. then the athletics immediately demoted him replacing him with a player who had a terrible career OPS of 611 many consider Ruiz to be the A's most promising young player so fans across baseball were shocked by this news rumors began swirling that the A's demoted him just because he wore this wristband Brett Rooker their most productive hitter got benched that weekend there was also a picture of him wearing this wristband Chris Potre was traded by the A's last spring he also wore this wristband James Caprillion wore this wristband and got cut by the team Tony all I'm saying is, if everybody wears a wristband, then how they they can't let everybody Tim go. Also wore this wristband, and this offseason the Athletics let him walk in free agency. These wristbands were all made by the Last Dive Bar, a fan-run organization that has fallen out of favor with the team because they are actively trying to fight against the team's ownership. They helped Facts. organize the infamous reverse protest night last season and are to blame for many of the disrespectful signs seen through. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. The the, the, there's been one thing that's disrespectful, and that's the A's organization. That's terrible. Like the, I know y'all seen like the playoffs of like the old A's, like when the guys are coming out, you got like the crazies up there in the in the, the top rows and, and whatnot. Bro, A's baseball, A's postseason baseball used to be electric. I remember when it was what? A's versus the Rays in the in the postseason. That was electric, bro. Coliseum every night. The Athletics <laughs> don't like this organization. Yo, they got so tomato throwing. That the A's were getting rid of any player Yo. who showed any support to the last dive bar whatsoever. In all likelihood, these wristbands probably had nothing to do with any of these players being benched or sent down. But the A's have been so dysfunctional, people actually bought this theory. The team announced in April they will play their games at a minor league stadium in Sacramento next season. They will no longer be called the Oakland Athletics. They're just going to call them the Athletics. Bro, that's Vegas. so disrespectful. You want to get rid of like the name Oakland entirely. It's when the stadium is done being built in three years. Oh, shoot. That stadium's kind of tough. And hope to move to Vegas. They look like the Sydney Opera. The stadium no way there's no way that that's what's gonna look like built in three yo yo nah if it looks like that i gotta make a trip one thou wow percent years stadium workers in oakland are gonna be out of jobs and reportedly weren't even told about this plan stadium workers have also been warned that if they talk about this publicly they could be fired the team man you're gonna get fired anyway to, try to sell less merch that says oakland on it fans are already planning another reverse protest for june nobody is coming to the games the team is so desperate for attendance they offered a deal where you could go to 45 athletic games for only ninety nine dollars, yeah, hey. and twenty cents. Shoot, per I game. might get some they tickets, they bro. Estuary Ruiz to the minors so he can work on getting on base more, striking out less. That's crazy. And hit the ball harder. He came back two weeks later from his demotion and immediately hit a ball. He's continued to produce, and the A's, out of nowhere, got hot. Went on a six-game win streak to get the team to 500. They've had yeah, the lowest. They're ahead of the Astros. In a row. It's an insane 20 million dollars less than the second lowest payroll. Shohei Otani alone is getting paid more than every 
every single player on the A's roster combined. The franchise is actively trying to lose and move. Yet they <laughs> I don't know if that's actually trying to drop a fly ball. Though. Back of first place, in large part due to Mason Miller, who. Boy, what y'all doing about Mason Miller? He Bro, listen, look at this. I where's the pitches? All right, are we gonna Mason Miller? Yeah, pitches right there. Out of nowhere, leads closers in WAR, strikeouts, whip, and has struck out. 53. I'm telling you, that boy, nice. We knew this. We knew this. Face. That's more than any other pitcher in baseball. He's thrown 97. Bro, he throws like oh. over 100 miles per hour. That's more than any Bro. major leaguer. In fact, the only pitcher who has thrown more pitches over 100 miles. Let me take it again. It's got to be a raw the chat. Though. This year is still in. Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. As of today, my boy Paul Skeen's getting called up. And best believe, if we got the time, we react to that game. I'm wearing leagues. all my that LSU games. Paul Skeens, uh, LSU he uh, best gear. Best pitcher in baseball right yeah. now. He's on the Indianapolis Indians, and everyone is curious. Don't even worry about he it. isn't in the major leagues. He's, he's up. Six he's up. Six, he's up. 235 pounds. Throws 102 miles He's up. He's playing this Saturday. He's striking out over Two days. 14 batters is it? per nine no, today's Wednesday. He's all right under one. Three batters days. are hitting 175 against him. Every time he pitches, tabloids report on it and refer to him as Libby, Libby Dunn's, Dunn's boyfriend, boyfriend <laughs> because of his celebrity girlfriend but soon he might be a household name himself. he's gonna be more famous the than her 1000 letting him throw more than three innings at a time and even though he was only drafted hey I'm gonna be honest you gotta treat him like Wemby you gotta treat him like Wemby you know what I'm saying minutes restriction and then let him let him blossom you don't want to spam him in the minors come on man just get him nice work in he already showed what he could do. You know you're going to bring him up. It's time ago, to go to work. Let's get it, Paul. Within a few months. However, even as dominant as Skeens has been, Ooh, he's that's still a national not champion right there. Considered the best prospect in baseball. That's yeah, that's facts. Jackson Holiday. He already got called up in April. But it absolutely sucked. Holiday <laughs> is only 20. He didn't graduate high school he's until 2022. 20. He wasn't supposed to be in MLB until 2025 at the earliest, but dominated rookie ball. Dominated single A, got called up to double A, dominated, went to triple A, went off, earned himself an invitation to spring training this season, and dominated. He had so much hype. One of his baseball cards sold for $50,000 before he played. Hey, that person might have made some big money, made a good ROI. A single game in MLB. The Orioles started him out in the minor leagues this season, and people were outraged. He dominated every yeah, level. Yeah, so that was his first at bat, this was too. Just the Orioles manipulating his service time. But he hit so well in AAA for two weeks, the Orioles had no choice but to call him up. And it went terribly. It well, took listen, him when you face the Red Sox. First hit. He started off one for 30 and has struck out in 50% of his plate appearance. That's just a, that, like, I know you see it all the time. Like, players that are, like, great in, like, AAA, they come to major leagues and stink, a.k.a. from the Red Sox standpoint of view, Bobby Dahlbeck. Another one is, like, uh, Joe Adele from, like, the, the Angels. Bro. Like, these guys, I call them quadruple-A players. And I'm not saying Jackson Holiday's a quadruple-A player, but because he's still got time. But it happens. Like, league different is league different, man. So far in his first 10 games, he only has two hits and And I think he went back down and, strikeouts. and start hitting again. There's only one other player in baseball history to do that. After two weeks, the Orioles decided the number one prospect in baseball wasn't ready and sent him back down to the minors. There have been a ton of amazing players Johnny and Bench. Hall of Famers who got off to equally terrible starts. And Jackson Holiday and Paul Skeens will be back in the major leagues soon enough. But by the time they are called up, there could be completely new jerseys yes because Nike yep. and Fanatics i can't wait for everything admitted that to come out were a problem people collectively lost their minds when mob and nike debuted their new jerseys this spring training the lettering on the back of the jerseys was noticeably smaller during picture day the pants seemed to be see-through and multiple viral pictures of players junk spread online the season started yo that's and so in mass oh that's so terrible sweating through their jerseys riley greens yeah but we known this like we saw this 
with Nike's basketball jerseys. Like, them Jones ripped on, like, you blow on them, they ripped. at home and ripped a massive hole in his pants, and that has since happened to multiple players during games. To make things worse, some teams don't even have their uniforms yet. The Nike. Cardinals have not been able to wear these uniforms because they're not arriving until June. The Giants won't get these jerseys until sometime in May. Player after player have come out criticizing the uniforms, saying they're worse than the old ones, that they look like they're from TJ Maxx, saying the pants don't fit, and the players union has even put in a formal complaint to the league to make changes to them as soon wow. as possible. And finally, MLB announced those changes are coming. Even though many fans blame fanatics though. because they're the ones who make them in their factory, Nike is the one who tells them how to make it and sends them the material. So according to MLB, this was entirely Nike's fault. And Nike has finally said they're gonna make changes. By the start of the 2025 season, they're gonna make the lettering bigger again. Players are gonna be allowed to custom tailor the pants again. They will have higher seam stitch counts to avoid ripping, a new color slash material to avoid sweat stains, and even a higher quality zipper and now everyone in baseball can be happy again all right well what a great video from the man baseball doesn't exist uh make sure y'all go check out his videos this was a 30 minute video damn catching a good one today all right it's been your boy jay banksy i'll see you when i see you peace